If you follow my channel, you know I'm a huge fan of the Dragonfly laptops from the Elite Book line from HP. It's their business-focused or commercial-focused laptops that compete against things like the ThinkPads and, of course, Dell's Latitude line. And I really like what they've been doing as far as pushing forward the envelope, as far as design, lightweight materials used, and of course, all the display options that have been included in previous iterations. Well, HP sent over the HP Elite Dragonfly G3, and I am super impressed with it. Not only is the build excellent on it, they moved to a three to two aspect ratio, taller display. You'll see more on the display, you'll do less scrolling, when it comes to web browsing. They also moved to 12th gen Intel core processors. We'll get into that as well. And it has phenomenal battery life. Let's see if this all comes together to make this a winner as far as a business focused laptop. Hey everybody, it's Andrew and this is my review of the HP Elite Dragonfly G3, all new for 2022. Coming up. Now, before we get to the unboxing, I want to let everyone know in the interest of transparency and full disclosure, I'm not being paid by HP. I'm not being sponsored by HP. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. HP is not getting copy approval. That means they're seeing this video for the first time, just like you. Now, this unit is on loan from HP, and once this review is done, I'll be sending it back. And here's what's new with the Elite Dragonfly G3. It's now powered by 12th Gen Intel Core processors. They've moved to a 3 to 2 aspect ratio and a clamshell form factor. It's also got a larger touchpad, a 5 megapixel camera capable of 1440p video, two top edge mics for 360 degree audio, AI based two way noise cancellation, choice of colors. We've got slate blue, which is what we have here today, and natural silver. And it still starts at 2.2 pounds or a very very svelte one kilogram. Pricing for the Elite Dragonfly G3 starts at $1952.30. For those interested, I'll leave a link in the description below for more information and we can buy one. My review unit is powered by Intel Core i7-1265U, Intel Integrated Iris Xe Graphics, 16 gigabytes of DDR5 4800 megahertz RAM, 512 gigabytes of M.2 PCIe Gen 4 SSD storage. And with the specs and pricing out of the way, let's find out what you get inside the box. Let's open it up. Oh, nice. Okay, this is something a little bit new. Now they have some pictures on the, the, on the lid here. Uh, I get some warranty information for those wondering, but uh, let's rip this open. And it says, uh, oh, it says right here, 13.5 inch notebook. Oh, it feels nice. Three to two aspect ratio. It has that more boxy square look. It's gonna be taller. Let's see what we get in the box here. Let's start off with this. It looks like some documentation. The Elite book here, which is in the Elite line, I should say. It's the Dragonfly. Yes, it is a 65 watt USB-C power adapter and extension cord. And I think that's it. No pen here because again, this is not a convertible. And of course, this wax paper oh that's a nice blue and this is the slate blue color which is a bit more subdued than the dragonfly blue we saw in the past at starting weight of 2.2 pounds or one kilogram this is certainly easy to take with you easy to throw in your bag and get some work done on the road it's really good and the reason that this is so lightweight is because they're using 90 percent recycled magnesium but doesn't skimp on durability, earning a military standard A10H rating, undergoing a series of tests to make sure that this is rugged and durable, lasting the user for a pretty long time. And for those wondering, yes, you can open the lid with one finger. Good job on the hinges by HP. Now, when it comes to the keyboard, I'm a huge fan of this. I like the tactility, I like the key travel, and it's extremely comfortable to type on for extended periods of time. That's something we definitely want to see from a commercial-based laptop. This doesn't disappoint. And it has a multi-stage backlight that worked well, allowing you to get work done in a dark room or a dimly lit environment. And it has a 34% larger touchpad than the previous model. And it's been great for two finger scrolling. All the gestures work well. This nicely sized touchpad is a glass touchpad. It's a precision touchpad and it's super responsive. And this also has NFC and that's located within the touchpad. 
Okay, let's check out the port selection. On the left side is an HDMI 2.0 port. Next to that is a SIM tray for the optional mobile broadband. You can get this with either 4G LTE or 5G modem. My review unit has a 5G modem in it, and next to that is a USB-C Thunderbolt 4 port that is full function, supporting data, charge, and display out. Moving over to the right side is a Kensington lock port. Next to that is a second USB-C Thunderbolt 4 port that is also full function. And next to that is a drop jaw USB-A port. And then finally, a 3.5 millimeter microphone headphone combo jack to round out the ports on this laptop. I would say all in all, a really good port selection. Notably missing though, there's no SD card reader. That would have been great to have one on this laptop. And I just love how HP made it super easy to get inside this laptop. There are four T5 Torx screws, and the good news is that they're captive, so you won't have any chance of losing them. That's really good. And there's no screws underneath the rubber strips there, so that's even better. Now, once you do that, you just pop off the bottom plate. It's a metal plate. It's easy, and that's it. You're in. Now, as far as what's user upgradable, the SSD is user upgradable, so that's good. And they're using PCIe NVMe Gen 4 SSD storage. And as you can see from these reads and writes, very fast indeed. That's what we like to see here in 2022. Good job on that front. Now, unfortunately, the RAM is soldered into the motherboard. You won't be able to upgrade that. And my review unit has 16 gigabytes of LP DDR5 RAM, and it is running in dual channel mode. Now you can configure this with up to 32 gigabytes of RAM. So when you're checking out, that's the most you can go with. And again, it's not user upgradable. So make sure you get enough RAM for your needs when you're checking out. Now this has Wi-Fi 6E along with Bluetooth 5.3 combo card, and that is soldered into the motherboard so you won't be able to upgrade it down the road. Now this may be the first instance where I've seen a Bluetooth 5.3 device, and it's working well. Both the Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth have been working flawlessly so far. Now this also has the optional mobile broadband. It's got a 5G modem in this review unit, but you could also get it with 4G LTE. And that's a great option, especially if you're a mobile professional who needs to get work done on the road. And as you can see, there are a number of options when it comes to the display. Now, these are 13.5 inch display. That means they've moved to a three to two aspect ratio. This is not the convertible. So you now have a clamshell here. And this has a 1920 by 1280 resolution. Now you can get this in a non-touch or a touch display. I have the non-touch. And it also has a shore view reflect privacy display for those that need that added layer of security. These are all 1920 by 1280 options. And then finally, there is an OLED option, three 2000 by 2000 we've seen that oled display in the specter x360 it's an excellent one and i'm a big fan of this move to three to two aspect ratio it's a taller nature you'll see more on the display you'll do less scrolling when it comes to web browsing now as far as the display that was provided in this review unit again non-touch full hd plus that's 1920 by 1280 three to two aspect ratio and you get the really deep blacks the super vibrant colors and it also has really good contrast, as you can see from these numbers. And it has a pretty good color accuracy with a 1.37 Delta E score. Anything below two is considered color accurate. This doesn't disappoint. And it has decent coverage of the color gamut, 100% sRGB, 75% Adobe RGB, 73% of the DCI-P3 wide color gamut, and 67% NTSC, which is a pretty good choice. I would say decent choice actually for content creation, Photoshop, Lightroom, video editing, color grading. But if you really want a more enhanced experience with better numbers, better coverage of the color gamut, more color accurate, I would go with that OLED 3000 by 2000 resolution option. That may be the one to go with if you're a content creator. Now, HP claims that this will get as bright as 400 nits. I actually measured a little bit above that 405 nits, which is even better. And this is a glossy display. And actually, we'll notice my reflection in this shot. And you will notice it in certain lighting conditions, something to be aware of. But watching Netflix, Amazon, YouTube, or media consumption in general has been really good on this, but you will notice black bars on the top and the bottom. That's due to the fact that this has a three to two aspect ratio. And my overall takeaway is this is an excellent display, especially for the mobile professional on the road. It's certainly bright enough. I wish they would cut down on the glare, but there are other display options to go with if you want less of that. And there is an OLED option for those that want a higher resolution with better coverage of the color gamut and to be a little bit more color accurate. But don't get me wrong, if you decide to go with this display, you won't be disappointed.
So this is the camera on the brand new HP Elite Dragonfly G3 here for 2022. Uh, they moved to a clamshell 3 to 2 aspect ratio, which we like. Now, this is a 5 megapixel camera. 1440p, yes, very nice quality in terms of this video quality. What do you think about the array mics in terms of the audio? Let me know in the comment section below. There is a physical key on the keyboard that allows you to turn off the camera for more security and privacy. This is also an IR camera that allows you to log in with face recognition with Windows Hello. Worked really well so far, setup was easy. And there is a fingerprint scanner on this. It's on the keyboard that allows you to log in also with Windows Hello. Said it was easy and worked flawlessly so far. But I'm curious to know what you think. Let me know in the comment section below. Auto frame, auto detect, it's all there. A lot of security features in this uh, camera implementation. I really like it. I think they did a really nice job here. Okay, when it comes to performance, this is running the Core i7-1265U, a 10-core processor that's eight efficiency cores and two performance cores. And as you can see from these results, pretty good performance, especially if you're going to do everyday type of tasks like Microsoft Office, email, web browsing, any kind of office work. This will be handled really well with this processor. Now, of course, this has the integrated Iris XE graphics, which, of course, are not going to blow you away in terms of 3D rendering. You're not going to be doing 4K video editing, but it's certainly adequate for everyday use. Now, when it comes to the Cinebench R23, which is a really heavy sustained workload test, which will account for any thermal throttling, I thought it had a pretty decent result. And when you compare it to some of its competition, it did well in this category. And in particular, the single core result, especially on this Geekbench 5 test, was really good, topping the category, and I thought it did really well for everyday type tasks, which is what the single core really is meant to show and test. And of course, multi-core is a little bit more heavy sustained workload tests and stuff like that didn't do quite as well, but the overall performance, I think, in this 12th gen Alder Lake processor is really good. But please keep something in mind. If you're going to do any kind of gaming on this, these integrated Iris XE graphics are not going to be that great. And of course, you can lower some of the settings. You can get playable frame rates. I've tested it many times on this channel, so I'm not going to repeat it here. If you want a gaming laptop, this is really not what this is meant to be. This is a business-focused, travel companion type of mobile device. That's what this is really geared towards, not a gaming laptop. And when I ran the Prime 95 stress test to see if this will thermal throttle under heavy load, it would reach a core temperature of 100 degrees Celsius, and then it would power throttle down to 71 degrees Celsius, lowering the clock speeds, reducing the performance somewhat, but maintaining decent performance overall. Now, when it comes to the fan noise, you will notice it under certain conditions, but for the most part, remain relatively quiet. Even under the performance mode, under heavy load, it never went above 31, 32 decibels, remaining relatively quiet. And when it comes to the surface temperatures, even under heavy load, as you see here, it stayed relatively cool. A couple of hot spots here and there, never overly hot, never too hot to the touch. On the underside, there are a couple more hot spots, as you see here, but relatively cool overall when it comes to these surface temperatures. Good job on that front as well. And when it comes to the battery life, it's really, really good on this. In fact, it's excellent. What we're looking at here is over 14 hours on my continuous web surfing test over Wi-Fi at 150 nits. So what does that mean in real world mixed usage? You're looking at anywhere from 10 to 11 hours, depending on what you're doing. That's going to be really good, especially for the mobile professional that not only wants that always on connection with the mobile broadband, the 5G, but they also want that longevity, allowing you to get work done on a long plane ride i think you get the picture this is an excellent mobile device that gives you good longevity good job on the battery life now if you do need to plug in the supply 65 watt usb c power adapter takes about an hour and a half to give you a full charge so that's pretty good as well and when it comes to the audio, great sound out of the quad speakers here. The Bang & Olufsen tuned. I thought the volume was good. The mids were good. And the bass was good, especially for an ultra portable. Not something we see every day. Overall, good sound. Now, to give an example, let's listen to Epidemic Sound. And if you want to save 10% off Epidemic Sound, see the link in the description below. Now, let's give this a listen.
Okay, folks, let's bring it all home. What do I think about the HP Elite Dragonfly G3 here for 2022? And I got to say, big changes here. 13.5-inch display. They moved to the clamshell design. It's a 3 to 2 aspect ratio. I'm a big fan of this move. I like seeing more on the display, doing less scrolling when it comes to web browsing. They put an outstanding keyboard and a really great touchpad. It's 34% bigger than the last model. It's really good in terms of responsiveness. In a thin, super light chassis, once again, 2.2 pounds or about one kilogram, which is super thin and light. Excellent battery life here. Really some of the best in class before performance when it comes to battery life. They got faster DDR5 RAM, faster PCIe Gen 4 speeds as far as the SSDs are concerned. The two Thunderbolt full ports are great here and I love the fact that they're on opposite sides of each other so HP was listening. Optional mobile broadband for the mobile professional is an excellent welcome addition here. Obviously you want something that you definitely want to have some connections on the road. Superior webcam 5 megapixels, got all sorts of features, great sound great quality of the audio and video elegant design here negatives of course soldered ram which is of course a carryover from the previous model and of course this can get expensive but of course this is geared towards businesses this is a commercial based laptop at the end of the day but folks, HP pretty much nailed this. I'm going to give the HP Elite Dragonfly a score of 93%, earning my editor's choice in the 13-inch clamshell category geared towards businesses here for 2022. Definitely making it worth your money. So what do you think about the Elite Dragonfly G3? And obviously this is the slate blue. It does collect some fingerprints. You'll be, you will be wiping it down. 90% recycled magnesium allows this to get in at under a kilogram or just slightly under a kilogram or 2.19, 2.2 pounds, really thin and light. I love the optional 5G you can get on this, also 4G as well. Uh, that's gonna be great for the road warrior, the business executive that needs that always on connection. Super thin, super light, two Thunderbolt 4 ports, one on each side, that's great. And I also like the fact that this has a really nice 13.5 inch display. It's a taller display and you can see more on the display. You'll do less scrolling when it comes to web browsing. They went away from the convertible. Now I did get a look at the two in one folio version of this. That's a prototype I got a chance to look at. I'll leave a link in the description below. That's coming very soon for those that want a pull forward two in one design. But this is a traditional laptop design. It has the traditional clamshell design, as I mentioned. A phenomenal keyboard, phenomenal touchpad. Actually, the touchpad's 34% larger than the previous gen, so really good. And the quad speakers on this, they're Bang & Olufsen tuned, sounded really good. And a really super upgraded camera here. 5 megapixels, 1440p video, great sound out of the mics. I thought it was excellent in terms for video conferencing. Now, when it comes to price, obviously this is gonna be on the expensive side, but keep in mind, this is not geared towards the average consumer. This is gonna be bought by the IT departments or the purchasing departments of corporations, businesses, cons commercial laptops, obviously, that are needed for those uh, businesses. So they're gonna get a discount. They're gonna buy these in bulk. And not only that, HP does run sales, so keep your eye on the link in the description below to find the best price and the latest pricing that you don't wanna miss. But I think for the price to performance ratio here, yes, it is expensive, but I think you're getting a lot of features that a business executive would need, especially the always on connection in terms of that optional mobile broadband. And of course, the really phenomenal battery life and the really good performance out of that U series processor. So please hit the like button, please subscribe, please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course, my website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.